Good morning. We give God praise for you. Welcome to our morning worship service. My name is Roosevelt Williams. I'm the senior pastor at St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church. And right now we'll start our worship service with this morning's announcements. Good morning, St. John's. Uh, remember that all announcements need to be turned in to the church office by Wednesday of each week. And you may email your announcements to St. John's AME at bellsouth.net. Join us for prayer. St. John's AME Church prayer line is available every Tuesday morning at 615. Please feel free to join the call. The prayer line number is 515-604-9300. The access code is 418-515. The 2020 Annual Conference Series for the 9th Episcopal District will be held on Tuesday, September 29th through Friday, October the 2nd. The Alabama River Region Annual Conference Business Session will be held on Tuesday, September the 29th. Observers can view the conference via Facebook Live at www.facebook.com slash 9th District A.M.E. The daily agenda can be found on the 9th District website, which is 9th, spelled out 9th, N-I-N-T-H, A-M-E, church.org. Join us on Facebook for Friday Night Live services at 7.30. Uh, you may also connect on Facebook at facebook.com slash roosevelt.williams.com. 315. We are studying the Holy Spirit. Join us for Conference Call Sunday School at 910 every Sunday morning. Call in number is 515-604-9300. Access code 418-515. For more information, please contact our Sunday School Superintendent, Ira Simmons. St. John's youth can attend the teen Sunday school class via Zoom at 9.30 each Sunday morning. For more information, contact Terry Brown. The Kids Praise Children's Church will meet today on Zoom, so parents, please have your children on Zoom today at 11.30. The uh, Zoom invite is on your email sent through Keith. For more information, you may contact Marlena Bowler. Sunday evenings at the altar prayer line is this Sunday evening at 6.15. We will have a special intercessory prayer to end our conference year. So we would like for the whole church to join us this evening at 6.15 as we pray. The call-in number is 515-604-9300. Access code is 418 418- Five one five. The house team ministry will not meet this week due to Pastor Williams attending the series of annual conferences. There are two offerings for the adult Bible study on Wednesdays. You can join Terry Brown for conference call adult Bible study at 615. That call in number is 605-313-5800. Six two. The access code is five four zero three one zero. Starting October seventh, we will begin studying the seven realities for experiencing God: how to know and do the will of God. By Henry and Richard Blackaby, the book purchase is not necessary. The other Bible study, adult Bible study, is on Zoom uh, by Ted Morgan. The Zoom adult Bible study is at 6.30. And we'd like you to invite your family, friends, neighbor, whoever who can join on Zoom. If you want any other information, please contact Dr. Ted Morgan. Uh, TLC Women's Ministry will be recognizing Breast Cancer Awareness on Saturday, October 3rd at 10 via Zoom. Don't forget, you can do online giving through Givelify. 
We have some birthdays for this week, September the 27th through October the 3rd. Jacqueline Goler, Joseph Kendricks on the 27th. Reverend Marion Brock Jr. and Lucy Thomas on the 28th. And Cheryl Webb on the 29th. Pray that God gives you a day as bright and wonderful as you. Happy birthday and many, many more. Let us not forget to pray for those who are sick and shut in, as well as send a card or make a call. The scripture for the week, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. Proverbs 15 and 1. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice. We are glad in it. We magnify your name. We lift you up. You are a magnificent God. We can't describe your greatness. But Father, we thank you for being a forgiving God. Father, give us a heart and a mind to forgive as you have forgiven us. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice that you made on the cross so that we might have life eternally and abundantly. Thank you for your love and your mercy uh, and your grace that you show us every day. New mercies day after day after day. And we thank you. We thank you. Father, give us everything that we need to be able to live a life that glorifies you. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have thine own way. Father, help us to surrender every care, every worry, every frustration, every disappointment, everything that thought that is not of you. Cast it down in the name of Jesus and fill us with your hope in knowing that all is well. We cast all our cares on you because you care for us. We don't have to be anxious in anything, not even during this pandemic. No matter what it looks like, we walk by faith and not by sight. So we thank you for being our God that we can depend upon, that we can lean on, that you are our strong tower, that we can find safety under your wing. So, Father, we thank you. Thank you. We ask that you be with each and every one of us this day that can hear my voice. We thank you for blessing and blessing indeed. We ask you to be with the sick and the shut-in, Lord. We ask you to be with the bereaved. Father, we ask you to be with those in the nursing homes, in the hospitals, those who are essential workers that give the care that is necessary. Those, Lord God, that have to uh, work and go into our schools, Lord God, and go into the hospitals, go into the grocery stores, going wherever is necessary so that we may continue on with life. Bless them in a special way, Lord God. We thank you for that. We ask that you continue to cover and protect and keep them in all ways. Now, Father, we just ask that you just, uh, just like a domino effect, go through everybody's household and bless, 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 Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, have your way with the word that will go forth this day. Have your way. Open up our eyes and ears and touch our hearts to receive the word so that we are doers and not hearers only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word of God this morning is coming from 2 Kings, the 7th chapter, 3 through 9. 2 Kings 7, 3 through 9. Now, there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. And they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army of the Syrians to hear the noise of the chariots and the noise of horses to the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, Look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. 
And when these lepers came uh, to the outskirts of the camp, they were they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Sheila. Thank you for the reading of God's holy word. There's nothing like his holy word. And let us pray. Lord God, give me everything that I need, Lord God, to speak forth your word. I thank you, Lord God, for every opportunity to share. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to share with your people. Lord, we don't take this responsibility lightly. So, Lord God, anoint me to say the right things, Lord God, and anoint the ears and eyes of your people so they may receive not from a man but from you. Yes. Bless us all this day, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'll just read one verse one more time in your hearing. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And it reads, Now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? Why are we sitting here until we die? In this passage of Scripture, we see that God's people find themselves in trouble yet again. But not just because of their sin, they're in serious trouble. And facing a famine because the king refused to acknowledge God. He, he refused to acknowledge God's message. He refused to acknowledge God's word. He refused to acknowledge God's miracles. Sound familiar? The unfaithfulness of the king um, caused Samaria to be overtaken by Syria. And God's people were dying of starvation. Corrupt leadership causes corrupt fellowship which causes all types of chaos. It just goes on and on and on. The blessings of the past were not working now because there was a paradigm shift and everything changed. Whatever worked for us in the past may not work necessarily right now. That paradigm shift, that system, that job, that relationship, our health, our wealth, it may have shifted. It may have shifted, beloved, and because it has shifted, we need to come up with plan B. That's how the sermon, plan B. Since the leadership wouldn't listen, God brought news of deliverance through unlikely sources for lepers. Now, I didn't say for governors. I didn't say for kings. I didn't say for potentates. I didn't say for religious leaders, but for lepers. You know, the lepers who had all types of skin conditions and you know, body parts sometimes were falling off. They would have to enter into a camp and cover their mouths and say, unclean, unclean. Yeah, those guys. So God chose some unlikely sources to bring about some good news. The lepers. And God gave them plan B. So they said, now, look. You know, the Syrians, they've just taken over everything. They have seized the city. We don't have any food. We don't have anything. So these four lepers said, why do we sit here and die? Why do we sit here and die? Here. Why do we sit here in, pre, um, in a pre-COVID-19 mindset? Why do we sit here longing for the past and ignoring the future? Why do we sit here planning for the future based on the past that has shifted? Why do we sit here in a state of stagnation because we're afraid to move? Move over to plan B. Plan B. Plan B isn't as risky as it sounds. Plan B is your new normal. Plan B is your way out. Plan B is your way in into a blessing. The lepers had a simple idea and it was called plan B. They said, now if we sit here, we're going to die. So let's go ahead and go into the camp. Now if they... You know, if they take us captive, you know, that's fine. If they kill us, that's fine because we're going to die anyway. So I'm telling somebody this morning, come up with plan B. So they went into the temp and they went in, um, they went into the camp, they went in at twilight. Now, the first thing I want you to realize is that these 
lepers humble themselves. They humble themselves. They say, now, we're going to go in. And if they, um, if they capture us, it's okay. So we're going to humble ourselves and we're going to go in and surrender to the army of the Syrians. So first of all, they humble themselves. Sometimes we can't get to the, you know, to plan B. Sometimes we can't get up um, being, you know, kind of stuck where we are. We're stagnant where we are. We can't get to plan B. We can't hear from God because we won't humble ourselves and realize that we really don't know what's going on. We serve one who is God above anything and everything. God is the one who has the plan. God is the one who has the secret. So we have to humble ourselves before God. So I want you to remember that these four levels, first of all, they humble themselves. All right? And then the second thing I want you to remember, that they rose up early in the morning at twilight, the Bible says. They rose up at twilight early in the morning. There again, another problem we may have, the reason that we can't hear from God, the reason that we can't move on from point A to point B, from plan A to plan B, is because we're lazy. We won't get up and do the work that God calls us to do. So they rose up early in the morning, and they went into the camp. They went to the outskirts of the Syrian camp. And to their surprise, nobody was there. To their surprise, everybody was gone. So they went into one tent. And they, uh, you know, they ate and they filled themselves and said, oh, this is all right. So they went into one tent, they ate, and then they got some gold and got some silver and some, you know, they gathered everything and they went and hid it. Still, nobody was there. They went into another tent and they gathered everything together and did like they did the first time. Still, no one was there. And so they said, now look, this thing that we're doing is not good. So the first thing I want you to remember is that they humbled themselves. The second thing I want you to remember is that they rose up early in the morning while it was still dark to get the work done. And the third thing I want you to remember is that they spread the word because it said this thing that we're doing is not good. It's not good for us to remain silent. Um, it's not good for us to wait until the morning light. So they went out and they spread the word. These lepers had a simple plan, a plan called Plan B, and they went forward and exercised their plan. I don't know who this is for today because we're in Plan A, Plan A is shifted. You may have planned on retiring at a certain time, and guess what? That is shifted. You may have... You may have planned on running your business and growing your business, but guess what? Because of COVID-19, everything is shifted. You may have planned on doing certain things, but you can't do them the way you plan because everything is shifted. That paradigm is shifted. We're in a brand new norm. So I suggest to all of us today, get yourself a new plan. Get before God and say, Lord God, what would you have me to do right here, right now? Lord, I know you want to bless me. Lord, I know you want to keep me. Lord, I know you want to preserve me. So, Lord God, allow me to hear plan B. Allow me to hear, Lord God, that second step. Allow me to hear, Lord God, what I need to do in such a time as this. Times have shifted. Times have changed. We're in a brand new paradigm. But God remains the same. And God says, I want you to trust me. I want you to listen to me. I want you to read my word. I want you to treat each other right. I want you to do what I call you to do because I indeed have a plan B and I've got a C. And whatever you need, I've got the plan for you. But I want you to come to me. So be, people of God, be like these lepers. Humble yourselves before God. Get up early, do whatever you need to do to work the plan. And then do also like these lepers and spread the word. Tell somebody that Jesus saves. Tell somebody that this is a rough situation right now. We're losing this and we're losing that. But God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a sustainer. Tell someone the good news and let them know that in God, we indeed have a plan B. Oh, God himself had a plan B. Because when Adam really, really messed everything up and when man fell, oh, he came up with a plan B. And that plan B is his son, Jesus. Jesus came through 42 generations. Jesus came and paid the full price for all of our sins on the cross called Calvary. And Jesus rose and fulfilled the plan. He rose and fulfilled the plan with all might and all power in his hand. And guess what? He's still working that plan through the power of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The Lord is still moving. He's still touching and healing and delivering. Guess what? God is still working that plan through the body of Christ called the church. And God has called us to move forward in faith. God has called us to move in this new paradigm, in this new point in time, in this new dispensation full of faith, full of hope. Trust that God has indeed a plan B. God has another way. 
God has a way to sustain us, but we've got to we got to humble ourselves. We've got to work the plan, and we've got to spread the word. So be blessed today to know that God has a plan B, but you got to listen to him. Be blessed. We're praying for you. If there's anyone under the sound of my voice, if you don't know Jesus, you have no plan at all. You're making it from day to day just on a wing and a prayer. But you want to uh, latch on to someone solid. His name is Jesus. If this is you, I want you to pray this prayer after me and say, Lord God. I come before your presence in the name of Jesus. I confess all my sins, for there are many. But I believe that you are the Holy Son of God. And the Word of God tells me in Romans that, I, that if I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that God is raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. So I say it with my mouth, and I believe in my heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead. And because of my faith confession and because of my heart's belief, I know right here, right now, today, I'm saved. So if you have prayed this prayer in faith, you are saved in the name of Jesus. Connect with a good church, with a good Bible study, with a good small group. Get in there and learn and grow in the things of God. Ask the Holy Spirit to, to uh, you know, show you the word. Ask God for another plan. Everything is shifted. you got to move from plan A to plan B. Be blessed and know that we love you in the name of Jesus. Don't forget to tune in to the annual conference series. It'll be on Facebook, facebook.com, ninth with an N-T-H, District A-M-E.